Once upon a time, there was a game. This was a special game in my life, a game with many memories despite me not getting far in it. It was one of the first games I remember sitting in front of the huge TV for hours on end, one that I still have a physical copy of, and one that I hold close to my heart for its iconic music, overall vibe, and the surge of nostalgia it catapults me into. That game was Harvest Moon Another Wonderful Life, and in 2023, that game was remade into Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. So, of course, I played 100 days of it. This time, though, was different. Before, I've done 100 days challenges, I even did over a year in Harvest Moon DS Cute, another game that plagued me in many ways during my childhood. But with this 100 days in Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, I not only recorded the experience, but I streamed it. Those VODs are still on my channel, so feel free to go back and see all all of the experiences in strange times we had uncut. But here I am to give you a more edited down and somewhat concentrated version of the events that happened during those streams. The goals I had for this 100 days? Mostly it was just to enjoy the ride, to relive my nostalgia and share the experience of the game with everyone watching. But I had goals within the game, to get married, since the first year of this game makes you find a partner, and then to have a kid and watch them grow as much as we could through the 100 days. A lot of the goals I wanted to hit were made way later in the process process of recording this 100 days, namely to get 50 wonders and unlock a special sprite outfit. Whether or not I reach these goals will only be revealed if you watch the entire video or skip to the end, but please watch the whole thing. And without further ado, here is the journey of 100 days in Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. Some of you who came for my Harvest Moon DS Cute video might be thinking, um, what the actual heck is happening right now? Yeah, a lot of this might look familiar because this game technically came out before Harvest Moon DS Cute and includes most of the same characters and setting throughout it. So here we are, meeting Takakura for the first time and um, finishing the game. So how about a kid ready to take over the farm? On second thought, wait, on second thought? Not up for it, huh? Can't say I blame you. Well, old friend, seems like your kid has other plans for her future. She's got a right to live her own life, I guess. I'm wishing her well. No! No, she... No! Oh! I... Although I very much appreciated this option in the game, this does not count as my ticket into the speedrunning community. No, we actually play 100 days in this video. On the actual first day of this playthrough, there was a very long introduction tutorial that I mostly did not pay nearly enough attention to as I should have. We were introduced to the locals, some with new names for whatever reason, and I was forced to choose between two dogs. Takakura is sending the other one to a farm upstate. I was also gifted my first cow and with the help of chat, named it Debbie Rye. And finally, I named the farm. This is a very serious decision, okay? And I don't wanna just gloss it over. You know what? Can I do question marks? I can't do question marks. Uh, let's do, should we just do that? That's, that's gonna be the farm now. I was also introduced to the three harvest sprites, not nearly as many as there were in Harvest Moon DS Cute, and for the rest of the day, I pretty much ran around trying to decide who to woo. Because this whole 100 days was streamed, I decided to let chat choose who we go after, but I had my biases, first with my eyes on Nami, the local mystery girl. To end just the first day of this playthrough, we got a scene with Celia, a local farmhand on Vesta's farm in town, and had some major red flags pop up with Matthew, Vesta's brother. We also got a scene with Molly, aka Muffy, the local waitress, and with Rock, the local himbo. I discovered my free Muku Muku outfit on day two and probably spent way too much time being amused by it, taking pictures with people I technically only knew for a single day who were now probably fearing for their life because an insane person just moved into their previously calm town. On day three, I got a scene with local Nepo baby Lumina, and today was the first day that traveling salesman Van showed up. And don't worry, he's actually legitimately a traveling salesman and not just some guy pretending to be a salesman or a band instructor who ends up falling in love with the local librarian. Because that would be very strange if that happened, and oddly specific. Just like in Harvest Moon DS Cute, Van is the key to success and money and riches in this game. But because it was day three and I was acting like a lunatic in my Muku Muku suit, I didn't progress with him today. I got a scene with Gustafa too, and I remembered why I married him in my first playthrough of this game as a kid. He is by far the most charming man in town. 
I did some more farming on day four and tried wooing the locals, taking photos that they probably didn't approve of. Please do not do this in real life. And I also got an explanation of what we were supposed to be doing with the sprites. Finding wonders for the wonderful life we weren't yet living. In retrospect, I should have decided right here that finding a certain amount of these wonders should have been the goal of this playthrough, but uh, it took me a lot longer to actually make that goal, so for now we just lived in chaos. By the time I got to day five in this live stream playthrough, I had actually gone <laughs> behind my viewers' backs and played a whole month and a half of the game in my own personal time. But hey, it turned out to be a good thing, because I knew things now. I knew the tips of not planting regular crops on your first plot of land, but the second, to save milky soup like it was gold itself, and that I could give people in town multiple things a day to raise their hearts even faster. And I had also grown my own personal infatuation with Molly. I also brought myself new outfits for in-game because I'm a material girl, baby, and I'm not afraid to show the town that even though I'm now a farmer small town girl, I still have my city girl fashion sense. I got a scene with Celia today and felt really bad for her. It's interesting how fast we get scenes with characters in this game. It's all because by the end of the first year, you have to get married. All the single ladies have left the building because they will have the game end if they want a girl boss their life. The point of this game is to have kids and watch them grow, which is why marriage is a must, I guess. Anyway, Celia's scene was kind of heartbreaking and made me hate Matthew's character for being a turd. By day six, I was finally getting into a routine, understanding the game for more than a place where I can run around in a muku muku suit terrorizing the town. I was milking my cows twice a day. I was becoming a real farmer. And I got a scene with Nami where she visited the farm and took a little tour, staring at a pile of dirt like it was the Mona Lisa behind bulletproof glass. I did chores, went to the mines, gave people gifts, and got a chick that I ordered the other day. I forgot to order it food though, so I could only hope that it didn't starve or become a human eater out of hunger. And to make money, for that food and for my life, I set up my shop in the town square. That's right, in this game you can set up shop as long as Van isn't there. I always like to set it up at night so I can have people stop by on their way home. Their wallets are wide open at that point because they're fighting sleep so their guard is down when I come knocking on their wallet's door. Swiper, no swiping. Day 7 started with one of my and chat's favorites. The TV show of the century, Summer's Love. The story of a rivals to lovers couple, Achilles Tendon, and Summer. Truly the series that should win every single Emmy. After doing chores and mining, I got a scene with Molly. She nearly got attacked by my dog, and Takakura judged me for my very obvious crush on the blonde cutie. Day 8 was another van day, and I planned to make a lot of money. First, I did chores and got a scene with Celia at the goddess pond. I also got a scene with Rock, where I snubbed Rock harder than Taryn Edgerton at the Oscars in 2020. And when I sold my items, I made over 11,000 gold. I'm telling you, once you find the exploits in these games, you've got it covered. I got another scene with Molly today too, where she explained she was having a rough day at work. And I would burn down that building if it meant she didn't have a rough day anymore, hypothetically. On day nine, it was raining, so I wore what I called my reverse firefighter raincoat. I was squashing non-lethal puddles like it's my job. I got a sheep today because sheep's wool sells for 3,000 gold. I named it Eepy the Sheepy based on chat's recommendations and got another scene with Molly. She had just gotten back from a friend's wedding and people basically judged her for working in a small town. I told her she fit perfectly in the valley, particularly by my side, and she agreed. I gave Daryl the evil scientist and one of my my favorite characters, a fish, because if he likes you, he gives you a seed maker. And then I got a scene with Matthew the farmer. I don't really like him, but um, he's kind of funny when he's shy and literally runs away from a conversation. That night I also got a scene with Nami. She and I sat at the bar and I overshared with her about my life and she left without paying her tab and being the gentleman I am, I paid the tab. Which was over 200 gold? Woo! Just because I have lots of money from Van's visit yesterday doesn't mean I want to pay for your goddamn sandwich. Day 10 was the finale of the summer love show that I adored so much. It ended terribly, to be honest. It was more disappointing than the finale of Lost. I did get to enjoy another scene with my in another life husband, Gustafa. He played a little tune for me and only let me listen to four lines of it, but it was the best four lines I ever tasted. It tasted like my childhood, like the me who married this grown man just to use my sentient powers to erase our file and marry someone else. <sighs> the good old days.
And then I got a scene with Molly where she thought she was being followed at night and she asked to stay with me. Pretty much barged in my room and offered to stay in my bed. I didn't even say anything. And she was about to, I don't know, move in? Not that I was complaining. But then we found out it was just her boss, Gavin, trying to tell her not to go shopping for the cafe anymore. It ruined the night for everyone. And on top of the awful finale of Summer Love, it sucked. I know what you're thinking. Summer already? But yeah, seasons in this game are super short. This 100 days isn't like your average 100 days. We're gonna be going through a lot in this video, so hold on to your horses. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. Day one of summer and day 11 of this playthrough, the birds were chirping, the sun was shining and beating on my back like the blue man group beats on a drum. And just like that, I was given the blue feather, aka the only way to propose to someone in Forgotten Valley. I forgot I had bought a cow the other day though, so I named it Phantom Moo with the help of the chat. Then I got a scene with Celia, where she revealed that Vesta wants to set her up in an arranged marriage? What in the Bridgerton is this? Like, not even blind dating, but marriage? It made me feel like I should marry her just to save her, but my heart belongs to another. And I made a discovery. Because when I got the blue feather, Takakura told me, Lady Luck must be on my side. And when I gave Molly a gift, she asked if she was being gifted it and my character said, it's yours, Lady Luck. Molly is my destiny, you hear? My little heart can't take all this love. I also got a scene that confirmed that the Harvest Goddess is in this game. Basically, we have to collect wonders, which are like achievements, to get her to come back to the valley. But she bonked her head and didn't come out because we suck at being farmers, so, um... Oh well. I started day two of Summer with a show that wasn't nearly as good as its predecessor, Summer Lovin'. It was a sci-fi Twilight Zone wannabe. And speaking of Twilight Zone, and stories of unexplained happenings that teach the protagonist a lesson by the end of the series, I had a strange occurrence happen in the coop! I go inside. There's an egg. I take my chicken out. When I go back in, the egg moves! It's a coop haunting! A coop ghost, if you would! In other news, I got the free seed maker from Daryl today after forcing him to like me by shoving fish in his face. And today was a very special day as it was the fireworks festival. On this day, you view the fireworks created by the old man twins in town and choose someone to have a date and view them with. Chat and I chose to view them with Molly, where I was the most charming person you could ever meet. On day three, Huh? Day 13. <laughs> Takakura gave me a white horse, and with the help of chat, I named it Hermes to go along with my dog named Orpheus. I got a rival love scene between Nami and Gustafa that kind of solidified with me that I like them together more than I would like me with Nami. I also totally creeped on them during this scene, and it was way worse than when I was prancing around town in the Muku Muku suit. On day 14, I bothered a mysterious being inside the sprite tree and got a record out of it. The lesson from this is that if you bother someone enough, they'll give you something for free. I also got a male chicken I ordered which would fertilize eggs and make them worth more and also be able to hatch. And then I got the most unhinged scene with Daryl and my cow. He wanted to experiment on them. And as much as I love Daryl, that's seriously deranged and probably illegal. Then Debbie Rye showed him who's boss and he tripped somewhere on the farm, probably over Coop Ghost's elongated leg. The next day I accidentally triggered Molly's nine heart scene, which if you accept and ask her to go on a date, you will be going steady with her and be unable to get other characters' heart scenes. I left it up to chat to decide and they agreed that we should date Molly. So it was pretty much in the bag that we would be marrying Lady Luck herself. I made an enemy of a feral chihuahua on day 16, though I might have been the feral one. Oh look, there's a little chihuahua. I don't know, it seems to be a bit scared of me. What do you say? Are you scared of me, little old me? And then I picked up some requests from the notice board and did them diligently and not expecting anything in exchange. Enjoy your quickles and could you please uh tip me you can do five percent fifteen percent twenty percent oh okay you'd like some privacy yeah well i'd like a tip so not much happened on day 17 besides the literal typhoon weather and me contemplating marrying molly on the spot That's my wife. on day 18 i once again contemplated marrying molly and if we should do a rain proposal because after all rain scenes in movies are the most romantic pride and prejudice little women the notebook me and abigail but then chat reminded me i was wearing a literal raincoat and that isn't exactly romantic just like proposing to molly during her literal 
literal work shift isn't romantic at all and is actually kind of annoying. Nor is proposing while one of the twins in town stares at us like we're gonna burst into flame for being possibly the only gay couple in town. So I sold the van and became more rich and waited. Today would be the day to propose. Yes, day 19 of the 100 day playthrough. Since it was raining again and I could catch Molly in between her shift and her break and propose in the middle of the rain, both of us soaked from the weather's unfairness, but neither of us able to hold back our love confessions and just having to do it despite the pouring sky. But then it stopped raining before Molly even had her break, and I blame it all on the chihuahua that just so happened to show up today again after a chick of mine hatched on the farm mysteriously. So mysteriously, it must have been the cuckoo. <laughs> I followed Molly non cribbly to the inn and hung out with her and Lou, the inn owner. We chatted, we made food, and we were having a completely mundane time. So mundane that it just felt right. So I took out the blue feather and right in front of my salad, proposed. She was so excited that she kicked me out of her room to get a good look at the feather. And the next day, the last day of summer, we went out on a date to the goddess pond. Oh my god, she can't walk up to my house like that. Want to go on a date? Um, yeah. I love her so much. I need to drink water. I'm dying. Oh my god, we're so cute. I never get used to the clear air out here. It's so refreshing. I know we're gonna be married soon, but it still doesn't seem real. I keep thinking I'm gonna wake up any second. Honey, same. Same. Getting ready to spend the rest of my life with you feels like packing my bags and moving to heaven. Oh! I'm, I'm dead. I broke my own neck. When have I no- Oh my god, she can't do that look. She can't do that little blush and shake. This will be happier than anyone else in the world. How could we not? Oh! <laughs> we'll have each other after all. I am throwing myself into the goddess. Oh! <gasps> oh, I can't wait. I am gonna piss my pants. Oh my god. All I knew was that I could not wait to be married to her. Except I had to wait until the end of the year because we may be insane for only knowing each other for 20 days and getting engaged, but we aren't that insane that we're gonna U-Haul in 20 days as well. I mean, we would if we could. The first day of autumn. Nearly passed out from doing my crops because I'm such a gosh darn good farmer. I was disappointed when the goddess told me I wasn't good enough again, and I was struck by the coop ghost once more. A new detective show aired on day two of autumn, which is now one of my favorite shows that we've seen so far. Detective Chance, leaving it up to chance to find justice, is so girly pop electric, slow enemies to lovers, unlikely allies. I might be chasing you to bring you to jail, but you're chasing after my heart. I saw another rival scene between Nami and Gustafa, which again solidified my choice of marrying Molly, as Nami is more in love with Gustafa than she would ever be with me. I got seeds for the season, and I started befriending Lou more because she gives you a special spice if you're friends with her, and I need to impress people with my cooking. This is a small town. What you cook and give out to people can leave a lasting and sometimes damaging impression. Van Day was back again on day 23, so I was very happy to sell all of my milky soup and get over 15k gold. I also finally brought the couple- couple- the bed. Take it back now, y'all. I also finally bought the copper tools I could and a new hot autumn outfit to show off to my wife. Molly went to the goddess pond today and I kind of regret not proposing to her there, but I brought a sheep, which made me feel better. That night I got a scene where I followed Daryl into the darkened shadow night of the goddess pond and he revealed to me that a strange creature lived there. We both got jump scared by the one and only Muku Muku and Daryl dislocated his shoulder off screen. I got my next sheep on day 24 and named it Bo Peep the Sheep. I'd also been giving Pui lots of coins whenever I could because I think if you pay him a certain amount, he later unlocks a tool upgrade. Plus, he sings you a song every time you pay him, so it's worth it. Feeding your friends home crew with many coins, but we will sing his dream through. The next day, I tuned into my morning episode of Chance the Detective and really considered if the detective and Phantom Thief, no, not Sky, this one is called Coupon the Third, were gonna end up dating. I was ready to lead this fandom to battle. And today was our next festival of our first year in Forgotten Valley, the Harvest Banquet. 
Vesta came to my house and told me to bring an item from my farm to put in the town soup and to meet at the end from 10 to 5. And I was excited, really. I grabbed a tomato from my fridge, a tomato that I put a lot of love into growing and saved specifically for an event like this. And when I brought it to Lou for the soup, you're gonna join us for the harvest banquet, ain't ya? Well then, did you bring something from your farm? Of course I did. Much obliged, I'd love to see what you bought. Well, we're gonna say tomato. I feel like that's a good thing for a, a stew, right? Oh, uh, why did she say it like that? She said, oh, but not like the good kind of italicized O. Oh. She said, oh, like ellipses O. Oh. That was such, that was such bullying. That was, that was bullying. bullying. Lou, I chose this tomato for you. I can't believe it. This is making a nice addition to the pot. A nice one, but not a great one. Ooh. That is so upsetting. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. She hates me. Everyone in this town hates me. Me overthinking my tomato choice. Time to get things rolling. Best here was kind enough to donate a generous helping of veggies from her farm. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, so Vesta was kind enough, huh? Vesta was kind enough and I was, oh. And I was, oh, ellipses, excuse me. Can't forget the ellipses. Cause Vesta has a great farm and a generous helping. And I bought one tomato. That's the problem, huh? It's cause I bought one tomato. Is that why you're angry at me, Lou? Is that why you are looking down at me? Because you've seen how many milky soups I've made and then I come to this place and I just give you a single tomato. Well, maybe it's because Vesta, Vesta, yes, the ve the kind Vesta you're talking about. Maybe it's because she told me to bring one item, one single item. She said bring an item from your farm bring one item from your farm and guess what i did i bought one item from my farm and yes lou yes maybe maybe i should have bought the milk but you know what then i wouldn't have milky soup to give out to the people of the town because they love the milky soup so would you rather i put my freaking milk in this stew with all these crappy vegetables from vesta's clearly pesticide ridden farm or would you rather i bring one single to tomato that I grew myself. And you say, oh. And you say, excuse me. You say, oh, ellipses. Can't forget the ellipses. Well, you know what, Lou? Maybe I don't need your spice. Maybe I don't need your spice. And maybe I don't need you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not leaving. I'm just saying, okay? Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I lost part of myself here. I really was upset, okay? And it's not your fault. I'm really glad that Molly wasn't here to see this. I'm really glad that I contained myself in the time that I did because it was about to get real messy, okay? We were about to have stew-covered clothes here. I was about to push the pot over, if you know what I'm saying. That's not a metaphor, okay? We can get past this, guys. We can do it, okay? Thank you, Vesta. Thank you. All that's left is the finishing touch, adding what Rin bought. What Rin bought? You mean the stinky tomato? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't want to project. I didn't even cut the tomato. Oh, now that smells good. Okay, see, now, now I feel like you're pitying me. Now I feel like you're kind of making fun of me. And I don't want you to pity me, okay? It's fine if you don't like the tomato. Let's just all agree that the tomato's bad. Well, wait a sec. Go ahead, serve it. Yeah, smile. I can sense that it's a fake smile. I can sense it. Nobody got my tomato in there because there's not... <laughs> no, nobody's got a whole tomato in their freaking bowl, so <laughs> clearly nobody actually got my tomato, unless we were using my tomato like it was a tea. You know what else got in that soup? Probably some spit. Probably some of my tears, too. I bet you the tears taste better than the tomato because the tomato got an O ellipsy. Here's hoping for another hearty banquet next year. I see the underlying here. I see you're like, let's hope we celebrate it next year without Rin's tomato. That's what you were gonna say, but you cut yourself off, isn't it? Duh. Yeah. Leave it to me to start beef with the kindest characters in the kindest video game. But really, this was a planned attack. This was attack of desperate housewives. I was framed. I tried to go to my future wife for support, and she was supportive, but even she didn't take my tomato. So I was desperate, asking around, and the only one who took it Nina, my true friend, my true ally. I walked this little old lady home because she is my bestie grandma mother person and she deserves the world. And if Nina believes in me, maybe I can believe in myself. But even then, I was ready for vengeance. Vengeance in the form of tomatoes.
I all but ran to Vesta's farm on day 26, set on buying tomatoes and fertilizer to make my dreams of proving the town wrong true. But when I got there, I was shown some truths that I was not expecting. Did you eat a lot at the harvest banquet? Vesta and the others prepped for days to make sure it went perfectly. Oh, she prepped for days? Did she? But she only told me the morning of because she's the one who owns the rodeo and I'm just a rider, huh? I'm just a rider that you can exploit and use. Honestly, Vesta runs people ragged, but uh, I'm glad you looked like you were having fun. Wait, Ma wait, this is a turn of events. Hold on. Matthew agrees? Matthew agrees that Vesta's a problem. Vesta needed me all of a sudden with requests. Who was to say she wouldn't make a fool out of me again? Well, fool I was, because I planted my tomatoes, put down the fertilizer I spent my hard-earned money on, and then my chat told me I wouldn't have time to grow them in the four days left in autumn. I was... I mean, I was, I was a broken farmer. A broken person. Negativity ate at my insides like a cloud on a previously sunny day, and I almost felt like giving up. But my wife, my future wife, made me feel better. And you know what? I decided that I, I, I may not get my revenge today. Or tomorrow. Or the next day. But I could focus on my milky soup empire. Focus on my animals and making my dog spin so many times he was more of a champion than my previous Nintendogs. And next Harvest Festival, I would prove my worth. I woke up with a sadness hangover on day 27, but the cure seemed to be Summer's love making a comeback. And because of that, I, I wasn't going to let the tomato incident of 2023 get the best of me, despite being physically hurt from it. But the rivalries didn't just end with the tomato incident, no. They continued with the rat dog outside of the mine. You, they say that you bring luck. You bring luck to the site. No way, you're taking yourself, you're taking all the stuff, little rat. I found nothing, I might as well just show you dirt today. Well, it's all your, f kick it, kick the dog. And I witnessed another scene where Daryl tried catching Muku Muku and ended up inadvertently being nice and feeding Pooey instead. I made a ton of money with Van on day 28 and ended up setting up my own shop as well and even sold Matthew, my new ally, some strawberries. I planted a lot of seeds the next day and went to the mines to continue my rivalry story with the Chihuahua. I could do loops around you. I could do loops around you and not feel anything. I don't feel anything. I don't feel tired at all because I'm a strong farmer and you're a little rat dog. A few moments later. The dog is getting to me. I swear. The dog is in my brain. It was the dog all along. You're crazy. You're crazy. It can't be the dog. The dog's just a dog. Uh. It's nothing but a dog. You silly imbecile. You're getting arrested. But I swear I'm innocent. That lady was so crazy she believed that a dog, a little dog with a little bandana wrapped around its tiny little neck, that a dog was guilty of the murder of 15 children. We have a witness here against you. What do you mean a witness? What are you talking about? Yes, it's me. <laughs> It's the detective that, uh, that, that found the case. Yes, I'm the witness, and I'm here to tell you. Takakura is my husband. <gasps> I'm your father, Rin. <laughs> what? My father arrested me against a dog? Remember when I said Matthew bought strawberries yesterday? Yeah, well, Matthew told me my strawberries that he bought tasted terrible. Forget him being an ally. He's still on my meanie list. Summer's love being back continued on day 30, and this season was somehow more depressing than the first. Meanwhile, I pushed my hatred out into a defenseless chihuahua. You're here to provide what? Luck? The only luck I need is my lady luck. And that's my wife. That's my wife, Lady Luck. Oh, we got a golden fork just right out in front. It's almost like that dog is there because it gives us better luck in the mines. But I'm no fool. I'm no fool and I won't believe it because that dog ruined my life. The first day of winter and the tomatoes I planted shriveled and died just like my hopes and dreams to do better next Harvest Festival. But I met one of my favorite characters, Muku Muku, for the first time and gave him some gifts because he's the cutest darn creature I've ever seen with the little bow and he's probably centuries older than me and here I am trying to pinch his cheeks like the cute he is. And today Nina told me a story of her dream. Turns out Nina was having dreams about the Harvest Sprites. Turns out I'm not crazy after all. Or Nina and I are just collectively 
absolutely insane. Summer's second love ending on a cliffhanger the morning of day 32 didn't stop me from continuing on with my day, but I was plagued with annoyance and a scowl. And my day continued, returning once more to my Mukumuku suit, which is kind of messed up because it looks like I skinned Mukumuku to wear his fur. But don't worry, he's very much alive and thriving. Continuing on with the playthrough, we did our usual chores and got some new dialogue with Molly. <laughs> This, oh, the laugh! This time of year really makes me want to cuddle up with someone. Ooga. I love my wife! Van came today and gave me some much needed upgraded tools, but sadly, no winter clothes, which ruined my day a little, but I'm fucking rich and earned a wonder for being it. Started day 34 out with a new horror story on the TV, one that put Reddit stories on a pedestal, or to shame, and one that I loved. Today's fright comes to us from an elementary schooler. Here goes. I like to play a lot in the town square with my five friends, and when it starts getting dark, we all walk home together. Lately, we kept seeing a strange man. He was never there when we were playing, but on our way home, he'd watch us from the bridge and smile. Ew! This must be the Coop Ghost, right? He'd wave his hand at us like he was trying to say, Come here! My friends and I thought it was kinda creepy, so we always ran straight home whenever it happened. But a few days ago, my friends had to go home early because they had plans. I realized I was alone, and I was kinda sad about it. <laughs> Me every day, <laughs> every day. So I thought I might as well go home too. But then that man suddenly appeared. He was waving his hand towards me, like always, as if to say, come here. But I was too scared and ran away. Even though I was running, I started hearing a voice get closer to me. Come here. It said, come here. Without thinking. I looked back, and the man was chasing after me! He was laughing too! I ran as fast as my legs could take me! But no matter what I did, the voice kept getting closer until I finally reached my neighborhood. Then it stopped. I was really relieved. So I looked back, except the man was there, and he wasn't laughing anymore. It was like he didn't even have a human face! What? It was the best type of horrifying and I thought about it all day while doing chores. And then I got another scene with Daryl trying to capture Mukumuku. This time where I was almost mistaken for him. Daryl failed again and also fell again because he's an evil scientist klutz and I love him and his skinned elbows. The finale of Summer Second Lovin' appeared on day 35 and it sucked. I need a Summer Lovin' series that goes longer than Grey's Anatomy. Give me Summer 45th Lovin', the sequel, the remake, the never ending saga. But today was the start like concert where we were all gonna gather at Gustafa's yurt and enjoy the concert with a special someone. I wished upon a star by Molly's side that I was closer with the townsfolk because Jesus a lot of them hate me and I just don't know why. The next day, I was made aware by chat that there were two scenes with Nina that I had to get in winter. So I tried my best to get them on this day, and I failed. But instead, I got a Gordy scene where we stared at the water, and he was pretty much annoyed with my presence. Plus, I finished some quests for the townspeople. I did walk Nina home that night, and thankfully, the next day, I was able to get the two scenes with Nina. One, where she races the turtle at Turtle Pond to show her dominance as the best old lady in town. And another, where she beat Huey at a race by cheating via the harvest sprites, though I can't blame her because Huey called her granny, and that's just cruel. True, but cruel. Also, I gaslit chat saying how Hugh was tortured by her, but that's a whole other story. I got a record from Mukumuku on day 38 because I'm just such good friends with him, and I realized again from the help of chat that my friendships were really important for my child's future. And then I started panicking because I wasn't very close with a lot of people, and I don't want to be a bad parent, and I want my kid to be happy, but I don't know what I want them to do, and I'm panicking, I'm panicking, Headaches. I'm not even a parent yet and I feel the stress hitting me like a boulder on top of another boulder on top of a hotel of boulders. <sighs> but it's all cool and fun, no worries. <laughs> on day 39, I felt like I was stalling because I was afraid. I was afraid to start my new life. Entirely excited, yes, but definitely afraid. Because soon, by the end of winter, I would have a beautiful wife and a child, and what if I let them down? What if my many outfits and fursuits scared them away? What if my lack of ability with tomatoes made them turn up their noses and run? I couldn't let fears 
get to me, especially after coming so far. So instead, I gave gifts to people who needed them, and with the help of chat, we voted on what we wanted for our future child. Basically, there are six career paths your child can take, and based on who you marry, they start off influenced in one specific area. So because I chose to marry Molly, our kid would automatically have a preference for being an athlete. If you want to encourage your kid to do something else, which chat did, and chose artist and or rancher, you have to befriend certain people in town and influence the kid every day once they're um, alive. So I had to befriend some people more since most people in town hated me. And in the process of befriending people, I beat one of the games that plagued me as a kid. The last day of the year, and I was shaken in my boots. I showered people with gifts, did some mining, and got dressed for one of the best days of my life. <coughs> That's me! Let's go! I'm running! I'm running to the altar! I'm sprinting! Oh my god! <laughs> this is so cute! Good morning, Rin! <coughs> now, Rin, you gotta promise me you'll take good care of Molly. She deserves nothing but the best. <coughs> Oh my god, we're getting freaking married! We're getting married! Go on, get out of here already. And don't ever take her for granted. She's your family now, too. I'm ripping my own lungs out. I can't. Nina! I can't! And oh my god, everyone's like, oh my god. They're, this is the drama of the valley. Like, they're, they're like, finally something's happening. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the rich people. I'm like, can you give me a, a wedding gift, please? Oh, Lumina's upset. Lumina, we talked like four four times, so I don't really know why you're running away. Oh my god! Look at us saunter around town! We should just do a parade at this point. Oh my god, stop! We just saw each other! We're all excited to be She's going to the farm! We're going to the farm! We're going to the farm! Oh my god, she's coming to my house! Takakura, come on in! We're gonna have a family dinner! I chose a nickname for Molly to call me, and we had the sweetest scene by the goddess Bond. <gasps> We're walking together. We're so cute. Is something going on? I've never seen anyone so excited about going for a walk in the forest. Shut up. We're walk. I love you so much. <laughs> I love you so much. I'm gonna freaking poop on the floor. Little dookie. <gasps> oh, wow. What is it? <gasps> I got fully goosebumps. How romantic. Ow. Was this all you, darling? Oh my God! <laughs> the power of Christ compels you. Your friends put it together. She's like, what friends? <laughs> no, I always dreamed of having a wedding like this. Something bright and happy and full of laughter. A lot of laughter. We're laughing so much. Oh my God! Take my hands. I, Molly, swear to be your wife. To love you unconditionally through all our joys and sorrows. And no matter what hardships might await us, I swear to build a household overflowing with warmth and kindness. First of all, if I say I, Rin, pledge the same, that's like just me copying her. I didn't even put anything original into it. Thank you so much, darling. I couldn't have asked for a more perfect wedding. You make me happier. Ah! You make me happier than you could ever know. Our lifelong journey together is going to be wonderful. I just know it. Chad and I also decided to leave it up to fate with whether we had a boy or a girl kid. And it was soon revealed that we had a girl. We named her Muffy to reminisce on Molly's original name. And she is the cutest child I have ever seen. This next day was technically years in the future. A lot of time had passed, even though for us it's only year two. We had a bigger house, a bigger family, a bigger heart. Aww. But the farm size stays the same until I put the cold hard gold on the table for Takagora to give me more buildings. And today was a festival that's held at the town manor where everyone brings food for a type of potluck. But before this, I saw the biggest change of the year. Um, what? What? Oh, not the feet out! Um, not to worry, you're fine now. Why are you at my grandparents' house? I'm leaving. What the hell are you doing here, man? Um... Oh. Hey, kid, you doing alright? You are to pay respects to Nina, too. You are, huh? You got a good heart. Um. 
Um. Hey, the hat. This is so hard. I was starting to doubt the whole wonderful life part of the title of the game. Cause what is so wonderful about my favorite person ever dying? How could you game? But there were some more new faces in town. Grant, AKA Garrett, Son, and the little devil from the DS version, Kate. And today was the start of my anxiety with my new kid. I had to be careful of how I raised her so that she turned out with the future careers that chat voted on. But also, I was open to letting the kid go as she was. I didn't want to traumatize her too much. Child likes athletics? Ugh. On day 42, I continued to influence my child, do chores, and judge the new house in the valley. And I forgot to mention that the mines are larger now since I found a stone tablet in them, and they'll probably get larger next year because I found another tablet on the first day of the new year. And even though there's more room, there's still never enough space for Carter to get a life. Day 43 had more farming, more ranching, and today was a van day, which meant I could buy a new outfit and toys for my kid. I bought the art blocks to influence that field and also got myself a goat since each thing of milk sells for 520 G's. Chat and I named it after the late Nina. And later, I got a scene with Daryl trying to capture Mukumuku again. This time, he attracted not only Pooey, but Mukumuku and Van, who just stood in the back the whole scene with his Pikachu look on his face. And Daryl admitted to trying to drug everyone who ate the food. And luckily, he failed or else we would have a lawsuit on our hands. Not to mention, like, literal murder. And then I got the cutest cutscene with my kid, and I swear I would break everyone's legs if it meant this kid got the best life. Hot Milf Me was out on the town on day 44, and when I got home, I got a another cutscene between my kid and my dad, playing with blocks. Aww. I got a scene the next day on how Flora is an animal whisperer and continued my work in the mines, then tried befriending more people. But this old man is impossible to get to love me. I did the same stuff on day 46 and showed my kid to the animals and showed her my tools to get her to like ranching. Anything but athletics. It's funny how once a kid comes into your life, you change drastically. For one, I became hotter in this outfit, but I also had a new routine and a new adjustment for making sure my kid got the life she deserved. I cuddled her, but I didn't coddle her. She runs around the valley and quite frankly almost drowns in the river every other day, but that's a good thing. It builds character. If anyone understands that, it's poor Huey from Nina beating him up. But today, I added another bit to my morning routine, and that was the grave cleaning mini game. That's right, there's a mini game to clean Nina's grave, and at the end, she tells you you did a good job in spirit form. I wondered if Coop Ghost was ever really Coop Ghost at all. Maybe it was Nina all along. I talked to the doctor on day 48 at Nina's grave, and he told me he heard a woman screaming there last night. What? I am highly suspicious that he is the one making the woman scream, not gonna lie. It looks like he's wearing swim trunks in all seasons, or three week old boxers. That is psychopath behavior right there. Speaking of psychopath behavior, I continued my not at all damaging career in family vlogging, and then tuned in to an episode of Mysterious Wonders, the show where reporter Suzuki delves into the mysterious wonders of the story of Seasons universe. Gotta be one of my top five favorite reporters, that one. And then I paraded my child around town, sucked up to Lou so I could unlock her special spice, and I bought and planted more seeds. Day 50. Halfway through the 100 days, and I had a legitimate child. Let's just think about that. A lot of the time in these games, you don't have a child until way later. I am not messing around. I started this game wanting a wonderful life, and babe, I got it. Anyway, on day 50, I continued conditioning my child to like ranching, to live and breathe animal manure. Also, big plot twist from the change in Kate's character in Harvest Moon DS Cute. Kate is actually kind? I know, it's strange. She was the epitome of evil in Harvest Moon DSQ. She was a devil spawn. Her red eyes cut through skin and any hope you had in any bone in your body. But this Kate is a little kid who hangs out by the pond and has a dad who hates his life. I feel for her. I do. Another plot twist and something that has nothing to do with the game at all. I learned from chat that my whole life I've been typing the wrong way. Raise your hand if you use caps lock to capitalize words instead of the shift key. No? Just me? And will I continue to do this even though I was brought upon this realization? Yes, I will. Caps lock all the way, caps lock until I die. 
I cleansed my sins of caps lock use by doing a good deed and cleaning Nina's grave on day 51. This is so dark that I'm like stomping my feet on top of <laughs> Nina's grave. I had a quest item to deliver today to Kate's sad dad, but in the meantime, I picked up some new requests, including one from Lou that would give us some of Rock's old beach toys for a cute family bonding scene. So of course we had to do that. And funny enough, I got the Lou scene where she gave me her special spice. I didn't ask what she put in it and frankly, I don't care to know. I just want her secrets so I can become the best chef in town and crush her! Oh. When I came home that night, I got a scene between Tagakura and my child, and it was so cute. My heart actually warmed, like it was in a microwave on high. Tagakura is the best babysitter around. And he's also surprisingly in line to play the next Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors because he has a giant plant living in his house. This plant is named Vinny. I swear, I swear I'm not lying. Vinny is not only our friend and Takakura's buddy, but Vinny will help us make hybrid seeds and special stuff. Just don't start feeding it blood, and if it starts to sing, run. And on top of this very eventful day, Kate's dad gave me an alarm clock as a reward for doing his request. For some reason, he felt the need to come in my house and set it up for me, which was strange, but to be fair, I can't read time. <laughs> Because I got beach toys from Lou the other day, the morning of day 52, I got a family scene with me, my wife, and Muffy. <gasps> We're having a beach scene? <gasps> We're all going to the beach! Beach day! Oh my god. We are so sweet. Oh my god, she's literally running so fast, she's gonna go jump in the water and swim away. <gasps> We're running from the waves together! Oh my god. Gosh, how is it that time already? We should get ready to go home. Oh no! Stay beach, Mama Rin. Oh, what do we do? Parent decision. Ooh, then how about this? We'll bring a little piece of the beach back home with us so we'll always have it, like a souvenir. That is so cute. Molly, you're a genius. If we found you a conch shell, you'd be able to hear the ocean anywhere, even at home. Now, if I was a pretty conch shell, where would I be? You know what, Molly? I would marry you even if you were a conch shell. Or a worm. And today was a festival day, so I rushed through chores to get yet another scene with me and my family at the fireworks festival. To start off the next morning, I shoved my farming tools in Muffy's face. Nothing like waking up to dirty, rusty tools right under your nose. I also paraded my kid around to the artists in town since the chat was between the rancher path and the artist path. And as I did this, I got a scene from the sprites who were looking for some wonders around town. Little did they know, I was the only one who could find the wonders because once again, every little bit of responsibility in these games falls on me. I'm not bitter about it at all. Today was a van day though, so I sold a ton of stuff and my kid was just allowed to wander around outside in the pouring rain. I'm a great parent. Day 54 was full of more conditioning my child and being blessed or cursed by the coop ghost. Because I finally figured out how to set my alarm earlier than 6 a.m., I got a scene on day 55 of my wife and kid waking up and I thought I could couldn't love them more. I did my neighborly duties of cleaning Nina's grave. I wonder if I'm using the same brush that I used for my cows on this grave. I did lots of mining, fishing, farming, and reached 30 wonders found. On day 56, I really, really lost my mind. I mean, no, I mean really. Like, <laughs> I did my usual chores of ranching and farming and mining, but all while doing that, I hypothetically, theoretically, allegedly created an alternate reality where the Jonas Brothers are trapped inside your journal. The Jonas Brothers are back, and they're better than ever, and they're in your journal. <laughs> we're the Jonas Brothers who were trapped inside your journal. It went on far too long, and I don't even know what else happened on this day because my mind was warped into just thinking about this theory I created. <laughs> I've been to the year 3000, not much has changed, but well, we're trapped in a notebook. <laughs> Instead of red dress, it's like, RED INK! After a close call with losing my sanity, on day 56, Muffy asked me a question. She asked me a question while I forced her to look at the animals on the farm. She asked if I liked animals, and this, my friends, was a sign that I was making progress. She was interested in my lifestyle. Rancher, Rancher life, life, here, here we, we come. come! All I gotta do now is make sure she never runs again and forfeits her dream of being an athlete, because that is so unrealistic. Especially coming from me, a person who speaks to three little sprites that live in a tree that I eat a mushroom to get into. Day 58, it occurred to me that everyone in Forgotten Valley needs therapy. You think? I was creating scenarios with the Jonas Brothers being stuck in journals in a universe where it is assumed 
that the Jonas Brothers don't exist. And Garrett over here was divulging his misery with me at 11 a.m. on a Saturday. Maybe if I get all the wonders in this game, we can use them to train the sprites to be therapists? One can only dream. And good news, I made it to 150k by selling all of my hoarded items and was able to buy the processing room, which once it was completed would allow me to turn milk into cheese and butter. If I can't have therapy, at least I can have more money in dairy products, right? But in sad news, having the processing room meant that the milky soup empire it had to come to an end. Herbal Soup Empire doesn't sound so good, so we won't say it. R.I.P. Milky Soup Empire. You will be gone, but not forgotten. Today was a monumental day for Frightful Fear Fest episodes. The best episode yet, in my opinion. Here's the full story and reaction to one of the best horror stories I've heard in a game that is supposed to be, uh, chill and relaxing. Today's fright was brought to us by a student. Most nights, I tend to stay up late studying. I have to, or I won't get into a good college. But recently, I've become terrified of staying up. See, something happened about a week ago. I was studying in my room like normal. My ma usually brings me a small snack around 1 a.m. What? What kind of mom do you have who brings you a snack at 1 a.m.? That's so sweet. I'm a little bit mad that your mom is so sweet. But that night, okay, wait, I actually got a little scared. My ma usually brings me a small snack around 1 a.m., right? But that night, I heard her voice a bit earlier than normal. Ew. Ew! Your food's ready, dear, she said. Usually, she'd come into my room and leave my food on the desk. But that night, she didn't. Ew, this is disgusting. This is disgusting. I don't like this. After a while, I heard her say it again. Your food's ready, dear. I thought maybe her hands were full this time. No! I opened the door myself. But it was my old man? Ugh. Ew! Ew! my feet off the ground. I don't like people crouching, crawling, or being weird and imitating. I don't like that. I don't- I'm seriously disturbed. It was my old man crouched down and doing an impression of my ma. When our eyes met, he laughed awkwardly and scuttled back down the hall. There was no food. <laughs> that's the one, that's the scariest part. Still confused, I headed down to the living room. Is something wrong? My ma asked. I glanced over at the old man to see him glaring at me with this terrifying look in his eyes. I decided to keep my mouth shut and went back to my room. By the time 1am hit, my ma brought some food up for real this time. I brought up what happened that night with her, but she wouldn't believe a word of it. But it's happened every day since then? And it's about that time tonight too? Your food's ready, dear. <coughs> Terrifying blood curdling. I don't think I'll ever forget it because how, how could I forget it? It's haunting. That phrase, your food is ready, dear. It's like the winter soldier trigger phrase. If someone says that, I'm screaming and I'm running and I'm throwing myself into a ditch and covering myself in dirt. Don't bring it up. Don't say the words. I'm scarred. I got my first S star quality milk on day 60 and was met once again with Matthew being an e-boy live on camera. Wait, what? <laughs> Why are you asking me if quiet guys are considered unattractive? Matthew, I'm married! And that night, I thought I was over it. The frightful fear fest story. But then, I tried to give Molly a flower, like I always used to. Heard people say that wildflowers around here have mysterious effects. What? That grows around here, right? You don't want flowers anymore? Wait, she doesn't like flowers anymore. What is this development? That's not Molly! Stop. That actually kind of scared me. Look, we read- we had the creepy story, okay? Listen. This morning, her neck broke while looking at the fridge. No! New fears aside, on day 61, I took some new requests from the notice board. And this month, it was the Harvest Stew Festival thing. Which meant I had to get my act together to try to find an ingredient to really wow the town this time around. Now that I have a wife and a child to prove my reputation for, I can mess this up. On autumn 2nd, I had another member added to the uh, farm family. A cat! Appropriately named Eurydice to go along with Orpheus and Hermes. My new cat is so freaking cute and lovely and was gifted to the family by Romana because she didn't want it, I guess? I don't know. And I don't care because now she's mine and I love her deeply. But, um... Oh, Eurydice hates me! Yeah, she hates me and pretends to die every time I look at her, so... Hold on, we need a picture of this cat! Oh my god. Look at me and the cat and the dog. Oh, 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 <laughs> it looks dead. 
<laughs> well, one thing's for sure, Eurydice sticks true to the myth. In better news, Van sold me a hot new outfit. Dark and mysterious, just like me. <laughs> I finally got the processing room on day 64, which meant the official death of the Milky Soup Empire. And today was another episode of Mysterious Wonders, featuring my favorite reporter Suzuki. This episode, it was a scarily close portrayal of the back rooms, and by the end, reporter Suzuki was lost. <laughs> In honor of Suzuki's disappearance and the Milky Soup Empire's demise, I created tons of cheese and butter to sell and slept thinking of what Suzuki must have been feeling while being lost among staircases. Day 65, the day of the second annual Harvest Banquet. I thought I was ready. I had a tomato with fertilizer standing upright in the field, ready to be put in that soup and ready to prove everyone in town wrong, unlike last year. But the tomato wasn't ready. It, it wasn't, wasn't ready. ready. I was a fool. I thought maybe, just maybe, I could be a farmer gal. Don't know why I said it like that. I thought crops could be one of my skills. But I realized then that it was a weakness. So fine, you win Lou and Vesta. I won't give a higher quality tomato because maybe, maybe you don't deserve that. And maybe I should just do what I'm good at. Hello, Lou. It's been quite some time. A year, in fact. Actually, like four years. Last time I was here, we didn't have the best interaction. I mean, I know we made a friendship, you gave me your spice, but I need your approval <laughs> because I am a weak individual. Let's just get through this. Well then, did you bring something from your farm? I did. I'm much obliged. I love to see what you brought. I'm kind of regretting giving this to the pot because it's really good. <laughs> it's really good quality. Let's do it. Here, it's got a star and it's special. This is what I'm learning, okay? This is what I learned. Doing things to satisfy other people will never get you anywhere. You have to do it to satisfy yourself. You know what? Maybe my tomato was awful, maybe it wasn't, but it was my tomato. Now, I have a gold star milk. I have made emotional connections, I have worked hard, I have a child and I still manage my farm, and I have a wife that I love and cherish. And no, oh, ellipses can take that from me. <gasps> my family's here and that's all that matters because my family's here and I made milk for my family and it's so beautiful. This year's meal is simply delectable. The ingredient Rin contributed is an excellent compliment to the rest of the dish as well. Well, ain't that something considering how much Van travels and how much different foods he gets to eat. That's some real high praise. I'd say this year was a major success, and my child has someone truly worthy to look up to, and to uphold the reputation of. <laughs> On day 66, I was overtaken by a doppelganger version of myself for a good portion of the day. But don't worry, because I, I came back, and I was better than ever. Anyway, on this day, I did more of the usual stuff and took some requests from the townsfolk. The next day was also pretty much a lot of the same. I did my chores, I donated to Pooey in hopes that soon I would unlock the upgraded sickle, and I fulfilled some requests and got a wonder. On day 68, I watched a show about a new music group, and they introduced themselves and the different items of produce that made up this huge group. And just when I was discovering what rutabaga was, my internet was cut off. So if you ever see a rutabaga, whatever the hell that is, beware. It's probably after your internet connection. <laughs> And even more mysteries rose on day 69, where an episode of Mysterious Wonders aired. But reporter Suzuki, still gone! Nowhere to be found! So no new episode of Mysterious Wonders. I did more stuff on day 70 that was boring! boring. No doppelganger possessed me, and no Rutabaga attacked me, and Coop Ghost remained tame! So none of it is worth mentioning. But on winter 1st, I got my new star cow that I ordered. Chad helped me named it Mutabega after my trauma. I got another scene of the sprites trying to look for wonders. And y'all, I appreciate the help, but you're pressuring me. This is peer pressure. Please leave me alone. I have 
find the wonders at my own pace. And instead of finding the wonders, I clean Nina's grave to a medley of the Jonas Brothers. Get some help. But then, at this point, I finally did consider finding the 50 wonders in this playthrough. To be fair, I didn't have many goals at the start of this, so finding a certain amount of wonders in 100 days would be the more professional and organized way to do things. But as soon as this idea popped up, I just gave it up. And I continued singing Jonas Brothers and later became Gobrin. I love my job and I sweep all day. I love my job and I go to say. We chimney goblin sweepers do love our lives. <laughs> Day 73, I had some hybrids cooking underground for a quest, all thanks to my man, the plant, Vinny. Van snubbed me today with no cool stuff, and I checked my kid's abilities and had no clue how I was going to get my kid to give up the athlete thing. My star cow was grown up by day 74, which meant more milk and money, and I gave some sound advice to my child. Sometimes you just gotta run in a circle, Muffy, and think, what are you doing with your life? I did my chores on day 75, which included selling things in the shipping bin. I learned that if you don't ship things in the shipping bin, your partner could ask for a divorce. So I started doing that like crazy because I love my wife. And that night was the Starlight concert where I wished for my child to take an interest in farming and follow in my footsteps. Well, maybe not completely. I don't want my kid to repeat the tomato incident. I did a bunch of random stuff on day 76, like cleaning Nina's grave, doing chores, talking to Matthew for some reason, and selling my dairy products. I bullied myself on day 77. Did it? Oh! And showed my kid Muku Muku. Nothing like scarring your kid for life on a rainy afternoon. I went to the city on day 78 just to see what it was like. In the old game, you weren't able to go to Mineral Town through the passage by Vesta's farm, but in this one, you travel for around 6 hours in game and get a unique option each time. I wanted to go to the city to get away from the farm life for a bit, to become a city girly and have my shining moment. But my trip said I met an incredible farmer, which is the opposite of what I wanted. But I realized it was a lesson, that I didn't know what I had until I missed it on my trip to the city. Oh. We were gifted another Frightful Fear Fest episode on day 79, this time about the elusive Monkey Paw restaurant. If you subscriber, if you, if you subscribe to the channel right now, you'll enter in a raffle to be chosen to go to the Monkey Paw with me to be sacrificed for my dreams. Subscribe now! On the last day of winter in year two, I got a scene between Badak and Muku Muku up at the Goddess Pond. Here, I learned the truth. Don't judge a book by its cover. Or don't judge a doctor by his swim shorts. We got backstory to the doctor that he had a daughter that he lost, and another girl of her same age got sick and he gave his eye up to save her. I feel terrible. I had no clue he had a daughter. I always just believe what Hugh told me in the DS version that he killed the old doctor and took his place, but now I feel like the worst person in the world. I showed my kid to everyone in town after that in preparation for the new year and for my kid to no longer be a toddler, to no longer want me to hold her, to grow up. And she did. She grew. That's right. Muffy was now a big kid with her own room and her own diary, which I definitely did not read and was not caught on camera reading. Mama Rin always seems really busy, but she's still super nice to me. I love her. I hope when I grow up, I can marry someone as nice as she is. Um. Then we got a scene with her about this branch she found, and I fed into her delusions of it, being a magical stick. Because hey, I made a theory that the Jonas Brothers are stuck in a journal, so if I should believe anything, it's a magic stick. And now that she's older, her interest changed so much. It scared me a little because at this point she really loved art and athletics and ranching. Athletics was a little too high up for my liking and even though chat voted for art, I really really wanted her to be a rancher. But as a parent, all you can do is watch your kid follow their own path and silently influence them every day of their lives. Be a rancher! But not only did Muffy grow up and gain more sentience, so did little Hugh. But not for the better. Wanna try lifting a barbell? Just kidding. No way you could lift one. He did not! Now I really don't want Muffy to be an athlete. Anyway, then I had Romana's New Year's dinner, and this time I cooked something real 
real nice with Lou's spice. Romana liked it so much that she scarfed down the whole dish herself. She really said, um, num, 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 num. The mine was even bigger this year as well, but Carter still couldn't mind his own business. My kid had some sass about me telling her that cheese is made from milk. And we found 35 wonders so far. I ordered a pond during the first few days of the new year and it arrived on day 83. The pond doesn't do much except allow ducks to show up during the summer. So we had that to look forward to. Then it was van day. So I bought my kid a new interior design and got myself a goat and was just terrified of this teddy bear that is breathing. Oh, more like, Ah! The fact that this demon-soaked teddy bear costs 1 million gold? I already have a Coop Ghost game. I don't need a teddy bear walking around my house at night cursing me and my family and messing with my mental health. I also fulfilled a request for Batik today, and he gave me a book of flowers, which I very excitedly put on my shelf. And then, it was almost like nothing in this playthrough mattered until this very moment. It was brought on by a lovely person in chat, telling me to mix a certain combination of crops. Like my wife. My child, my animals, and everything else in this three years of playing meant nothing. Because then, I made my own, not ever existing, crop. Is he gonna give me, like, a Toyota? Whoa! Is that a donut? I made something real rare. I ain't never seen anything like him before. Why don't you name the crop, Rin? Huh? We get to name a crop? I mean, it looks like a butthole. What do we name a crop? We're gonna name a crop? I don't think butthole's gonna work. Well, let's- I love how anus is just on the screen this whole time. I didn't even mean to do that. Anus berry it is. No! Eventually. Um, poo hole. Poo hole? What's the fun in restricting words, right? Oh my god, poo! I cried! Tears of joy and tears of disbelief that the game would let me be an absolute idiot! Like, this was so dumb, and I spent over an hour laughing about it. Because on the inside, I'm 12 years old, and I still find poop jokes funny. <laughs> I'm literally a child! This is a lovely poo hole from Ufa. <laughs> <laughs> Try some pool salad. <laughs> I can't breathe. Pool soup. <laughs> I'm crying. Have some milky soup with some poo hole on the side. When the poo hole hits, your poo hole is ready. <laughs> this is the best thing since sliced poo hole. Oh no! <laughs> really in front of my poo hole? Mix anything else. After poo hole, I don't know if I need anything else. Day 84 was gone in a flash to the poo hole jokes. Poo hole museum, hall of fame levels of poo hole content. Too much to fit in this meager 100 days video. But I did also fish with my kid, which was nice. I think she was embarrassed by me and my poo hole fixation though. What? Day 85, more poo hole delirium. Creating your own crop and naming it poo hole is not recommended if you want a coherent and organized stream. I played by muscle memory alone and my mind just ran with the poo hole spiracies and songs. On day 86, my kid asked me what color the sky is and I wanted to say the only thing that mattered to me was my poo hole crop but that wasn't appropriate so I answered like an adult poo hole brain rot continued on day 87 but this time I was determined to grow the poo hole instead of laugh about it also I forgot to mention that multiple times during this playthrough my character mentioned wanting to be a nature sprite and that was quite concerning to me considering we have a great life here with our family and soon to be poo hole empire we may have had to give up on milky soup but poo hole is a forever friend why be a sprite when you have poo hole? While in my poo hole stage of life in the past few days, I managed to buy myself the amazing field. Because if I was gonna go full poo hole, I needed the space to do it. So on day 88, I got the amazing field finished on my property, and it was beautiful in all of its glory. The perfect place for poo hole to grow. I planted a bunch of trees on the other plots, and honestly, I felt like this playthrough was really coming together. Yes, on day 88. It was like a second win, no pun intended, when poo hole came around. I was not only a rancher and a wife, Wife and a mother, but a farmer and creative as well. Pujol checked all my boxes. Pujol changed me. And the same day, I got a scene with Muffy and Orpheus racing each other on the farm. Cute! But it's no Pujol. On day 89, I did a bunch of farming and other chores, all just waiting for Pujol to grow. And on day 90, it was time. The Pujol was grown. 
the first ever poo hole. We need a photo to commemorate this. Look at this. For all, praise the poo hole. We do three circles around the poo hole and an extra one for good luck. And then we step forward. We say thank you, poo hole for grazing us. Grazing? Granting. Grazing? Ew. Granting us this beautiful opportunity. We harvest the poo hole. It was beautiful, magnificent, the best thing I had ever seen. And as much as I wanted to encase the pool hole in a glass case and put it in a museum, I had to make it into more seeds so the empire could grow. The start of summer, aka the last month of the 100 days playthrough. I took some more requests and did my usual stuff, and I got a scene between Molly, Muffy, and I. I made my new poo hole seeds grow all year round and planted the first batch of the poo hole empire. I was so proud. I also got a scene that night reassuring me that I was a failure and did not have enough wonders to save the harvest goddess, which I kept forgetting was a part of this game. But now I had poo hole to worry about, Gabe. Don't you understand? On day 92 of the playthrough, Molly woke me up and told me we had ducks on our farm. I let them stay and live in the coop, but I kind of regret that decision. I thought they were cute at first, but then I realized they were kind of ugly and scary. The green eyes don't translate well on the duck face. And after poo hole there was just no beauty that could compare and all this farming it had me on edge of my own death but it didn't stop me from going to the firework festival with my family again it's it's just it's crazy how time flies and just like that your baby's a kid and your life has meaning because you found a crop named poo hole van was selling a record on day 93 for 100k bro was raising his prices now that he knew i had a poo hole empire on the rise and day 94 confirmed the fact that reporter suzuki was still Still missing and I miss them so much and I pray every day for that reporter's return so they can report on how mysteriously wonderful my poo hole is and on this day day 94 of the playthrough I decided to stretch for <laughs> for a goal I honestly should have just been doing this whole time I mentioned in the beginning it was hinted at here and there and the game was practically shaking me back and forth waiting for me to catch on and just do what they asked but it was on day 94 94 that I decided with the help of chat that my goal for the end of the 100 days would be to get to 50 wonders and unlock a special wonder outfit and what did that mean it meant I had to grind I had a task to cook, to make hybrid crops, gather records, and see cutscenes all within the last five days of the playthrough. Could I do it? Who knew? Maybe it would be one extra day of play past the 100 days. Maybe two. Maybe I would just fail. I just really, really wanted the sprite suit, and at this point, I deserved it. I said a couple times in the mirror that I wanted to be a sprite, and this was my way to do so. I, I just, I couldn't let myself down. I had to do what I could to fulfill my character's dreams. So on day 95, I continued the efforts to get the wonders I needed. And for a long, long time, chat helped me name a bunch of hybrid crops. These names will be held sacred in the vault of Story of Seasons and will probably scar anyone and everyone who hears them or who helped name them. You're welcome. So from my research on how to get the last record that I needed for a wonder, I found out that Chris is a reporter in the city, meaning Chris could have known reporter Suzuki, or Chris could take over Suzuki's job. No. Anyway, on day 96, I unlocked a scene I needed in order to complete the wonders where the sprites became Gustava's biggest fan. And then I spent the whole day and some cooking, hoping I could reach 60 dishes cooked for a new wonder. But after like literally two hours of cooking, I realized that with the lack of hybrid crops I had, it might be harder than I thought. And by being harder than I thought, I mean it would be impossible. But I, I, just, I couldn't give up. I wouldn't give up. I showered Chris in gifts in hopes that I would get the record I needed. And then I went back home to an adorable scene with Muffy. She asked me if I loved Mama Molly and I wanted to punch a wall, scream in a pillow, return and say yes. And as much as this scene was beautiful and soul inflating, it wouldn't change the fact that I was gonna fail. It's almost like I should have planned this ahead of time and not chosen to find the wonders on day 94. I just, I didn't have enough crops for recipes for the wonders I needed to get the sprite suit. My dreams of being a harvest sprite wouldn't fit into this hundred days. I was let down by myself and myself only for being a procrastinator. 
I chose on day 97 to take it easy and just do some town requests. If I couldn't get the wonders I needed, the least I could do was take in these last few days and appreciate Forgotten Valley for what it was, my home. So I gave love to my animals, as I did every morning, and gave the doctor his requested item. And in the pouring rain, my head held up despite the disappointment in my bones. I saw the blue box by my house had risen. Money from the shipping bin, perhaps? Or could it have been? No. Even if I got one wonder, it wouldn't be enough. I still needed two. <gasps> Wait, no, what is this? <gasps> we did it! Wait, wait! Oh my god! Oh my god, wait, hold on. Are you kidding me? No way! Yo! You don't know how happy I am. Yo! And we did the 40 request and we got 50! No! 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 I'm not even kidding you. That is insane! It was truly a miracle. Like, literally, actually a miracle. I couldn't help but think of all the times I had things work out in just the right timing in these 100 days type playthroughs. The lesson of all this? Procrastination works. For great to- <gasps> I'm so happy! I'm home and I'm here. Let's go! Oh, it's good to see you, Rin. But we're not here just to say hi. I'm gonna poop on the floor. We came to thank you for everything you've done. Yeah, you're amazing. You found so many wonderful things. That's right. So we want to give you something in return. We got you a matching outfit. <gasps> I can finally be a sprite like I've always wanted. Anyway, thanks to all your hard work, I bet we'll get to see the goddess soon. So just keep on uh, looking for wonders. Got it? Are y'all ready to see this? I don't know if y'all are ready to see this. <gasps> It was official. I not only fulfilled my goal of getting married and having a child, but I became a Harvest Sprite myself. It was a huge achievement for me, and the way it happened made it all so much better, because in the end, the wonders were truly, truly the friends we made along the way. And speaking of friends, remember the cat, Eurydice, who countless times would pretend to die right in front of me so I didn't bother her? She liked me now. All those loose ends were tied, and we still had three days to revel in these achievements and all of this love. On day 98, Muffy showed more interest in ranching than she had in the last couple of days. I read her diary again, and it seems she was leaning toward the artistic route, but who knows? This kid has a bright future, and there's no way I would get in the way of that. Unless she wanted to be an athlete. That I would get in the way of. I also got the golden milker and golden shears from Van, all for a pretty penny, but they were worth the money. I guess, maybe, whatever. I bought it anyway, so there's nothing I could do now. I also harvested not one, but two poo hole from the uh, farm. Double poo hole to create even more poo hole in the seed maker. Just you wait, this will be a poo hole empire. And even with the sprite outfit and all of my glory, I still wanted Chris's record. So I threw gifts at her like I was trying to hit the button on a carnival game to get rock drenched in ice cold water. And day 99 was a sad day because it was the last ever episode of Frightful Fear Fest. The show that gave us, your food is ready, dear. The show that gave me nightmares, that made me look over my shoulder every second of the day. It was gonna stop, it was gonna end. And it ended with a terrifying story about a kid getting stuck on the tracks from hands, gripping at his legs, holding him there. In a way, this story is what I could have been. If I hadn't have gotten my wonders, I would be stuck, held back by my own doubt and insecurity. But now, now I look like Cosmo from Fairly Odd Parents in an alternate and less magical reality. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I cleaned Nina's grave for the last time of the hundred days, planted my new poo hole seeds, and got ready for the last day. The end of these types of playthroughs are always bittersweet. I'm usually glad to reach the end and to reach it having hit my goals, but it's still sad. And this time, I was even more sad because I have a family that I'm probably way too attached to. And I have so much promise. There's so much to look forward to, so many more chapters to complete, but for now, it's the end. A book that isn't finished, isn't forgotten, but bookmarked and put back on the shelf. But before I put this story away, I did all the things that I always did through the playthrough. And I visited Chris one last time. And you know what? She gave us the record. 51, 51 wonders in 100 days. And the song the record played? Oh. <gasps> oh. I wandered around a uh, farm for a while after this not wanting to leave, living in the sweet nothingness of being around family. 
And to end the hundred days, I don't have any words better than the ones my character said to herself in the mirror. How come they say life is short anyway? Feels like I've got all the time in the world.